Okay, in this video, I want to introduce the concept of polar coordinates. Um, to begin with, what you have done your whole life is that you've graphed things on the x-axis and the y-axis. And this, um, if you make this, if you turn this into a grid, you know, with your different values, these, this, this grid is, is, well, they're kind of squares or whatever, but this is, they're a rectangular grid. Okay, so what you've done your whole life has been um, either called rectangular, the rectangular coordinates, or you could call them Cartesian, after Rene Descartes. Um, so the, that is what you've seen your whole life. What we're looking at now is where we write um, the ordered pair in terms of the radius and the theta. Okay, unfortunately, I'm home with, um, I don't have access to school and I don't have access to a printer. So in a perfect world, I would have printed off that page. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully, can you kind of see that? Um, so you'll notice, um, I, I wanna talk along with this, but you'll notice that it's not a rectangular grid anymore. What we have is we've got circles, and then we've got the different angles that kind of um, come out from that origin. Um, so the, the circle that you're on is the radius, and then the angle becomes, or that line becomes the other angle that's involved. Um, we typically, when you, when you sketch these, they'll typically um, be the, based on the unit circle, but they'll throw in an extra, so, um, I'm sorry, this is really very high tech, I'm so sorry. Okay, that was sarcasm. Um, notice the very first line there would be like pi over 12, and then you get to pi over 6, then it's, um, so it's 1 pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6, 3 pi over 12, which becomes um, pi over 4. 5 pi over 12, um, I think I'd have 4 pi over 12 is pi over 3. I was like, we shouldn't be at 5 pi over 12 yet. Do you know what? I'm going to write this down. Okay, but basically that's what our graph is going to look like. And if you had, um, if I had that in front of me, this would, this would be a little easier. But I don't, okay, so here we go. I'm so sorry. Um, it is what it is. This is the reality of our situation. Okay, so if you noticed in that first quadrant, we had okay, we had something like this. So basically what happens is this one right here becomes pi over four. This one becomes here's pi over two, that's zero. If you think unit circle, this would be um, pi over six, this is pi over three. These two are not on our unit circle, but they're not hard to figure out. This is pi over 12, and then this is, so So we've got one pi over 12, two pi over 12, which reduces to pi over six. We have three pi over 12, which reduces to pi over four. We have um, four pi over 12, which reduces to pi over three. And then here's this five pi over 12, six pi over 12 um, takes you back to pi over two. Um, so these, that's our theta value. So if I want to, if I want to graph the point, and for whatever reason, I don't, I don't have a good answer as to why they do this, but we always write them as a coordinate pair in terms of r comma theta. Okay, so we'll, we'll write the radius first um, and then the theta, which, well, is, okay, so so pretend I have the paper that you have. Um, let's say I want the point, I want the point three comma pi. Okay, let's call that the point A. So you can graph this um, on your, on, on your, um, on your notes. Um, this means that we're, well, so it's r comma theta, but typically we start with theta to figure out what we're talking about. Okay, well pi, where's pi? Pi is over here, and now we want a radius of three. So one, two, three. Um, I didn't draw all that quite, whatever. Okay, and here, ladies and gentlemen, is the point A. Okay, let's say I want the point, um, let's say the point B is equal to negative two um, pi over four. Okay, now what that means is, okay, so you can find pi over four, it's gonna be this one, so it's, it's pi over four, it was right here. But now they're telling you 
don't go in the positive, this is positive one, positive two, positive three, positive four. I have, I've gone that angle, and now I move, this is moving in the positive direction for the radius, but this is a negative radius. So what that means is that I have to come and turn around and go the opposite direction. So here would be negative one. This, ladies and gentlemen, is point B at negative two. Negative two comma pi over four. Um, let's see what happens with, um, let's say I want the, say I tell you the point C is the point, um, we'll go with three, um, negative pi over six. Okay, so now what I've done is I still ha I have a positive radius, but a negative angle. So what that means is that I'm going to come out here is pi over six, roughly. It's not the first line. Um, notice that there's like a negative pi over 12 and then the negative pi over 6. So if you're doing it on the grid um, that you should do it on, match and check and see. It's not the very first line. It's like there's going to be a line in here. All right. And so now we've come negative pi over 6. We've come down this way and we've gone 1, 2, 3 in the radius. Okay. What I would encourage you to do is um, is pull up the answer key to my notes and um, and I'll have these on there so that you can kind of see what's happening. Um, okay, so the next thing, what if I told you that point D was the point, can you see what I'm doing still? You can. Let's say D is the point, um, let's say it's the point negative 2, negative pi over 3. Okay, notice I, I'm doing this on purpose. I had positive, positive, negative, positive, positive, negative, and now negative, negative. Okay, so with this one, I want to come and go and find this negative pi over 3, which is going to be down here somewhere. And then I'm going to, um, then I'm going to go, I'm going to come negative pi over 3, but I don't want to go in the positive direction. I now want to go in the negative direction. So I have to turn around and go the opposite, um, and that's going to be 1, 2. It's going to be somewhere up here for D. Okay, um, the next, okay, let me continue with that part. You'll see I have a triangle. Um, on the on the page what we want to do this is a right triangle this is allowing us to find here is theta this is the radius um, this is your x coordinate and this is your y coordinate so what I've done is I've taken um, any points on on my on my polar grid so let's say I'm out here and I've just turned I've turned that into a triangle okay now this should be this should feel familiar to you because this um, it hasn't gone away, okay? We, we saw this initially with the unit circle. We then saw some of these processes when we talked about vectors. Um, and so this should feel very familiar, and you, I expect that you still know the unit circle. So if not, go review it, because it's really important. Um, okay, so we want to, there's a, a box on your paper that talks about going from rectangular to polar. And then it says r squared is equal to, well, hopefully you recognize what r squared is equal to. r squared, this is Pythagorean theorem, r squared would be equal to x squared plus y squared. Or you might, it might be helpful for you to say that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Does that look familiar? Um, hopefully you recognize that when we saw vectors, we saw the magnitude of, a, if this is my vector v, and I know the x and the y components of that vector, the magnitude of vector v is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So those things behave in a very similar way, which is helpful because hopefully you already, you already know this right here. Um, okay, so the next thing, we also want to know how to find theta. So theta here would be equal to, well, um, well tangent of theta, let's say this. Tangent of theta would be equal to... Um, y over x. Therefore, theta itself is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x. And then I made a note on your um, check your quadrant. I also made a video um, about this, how do I know I'm in the correct quadrant when we were doing vectors. Okay, so if you remember um, a quick review of that. If I, if you remember when we go to find the inverse tangent or arc tangent of, of something, it's only going to give us an answer in these two quadrants. It's only going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, but actually 
It's undefined at, at negative pi over 2, and it's undefined, at, here's negative pi over 2, and it's undefined at pi over 2. So the arc tangent is going to live between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, but it can't be either of those. Another way, um, I forgot to hit mute. Another way to think about that is that when we graphed arc tangent, we had something like this, where we had asymptotes here, where this one was at negative pi over 2, and this one was at positive pi over 2. Okay, so basically what happens, no matter what you plug into your calculator, when I do inverse tangent of, I don't really care, um, my birthday is 617. When I do inverse tangent of 617, well this, this is great, it's going to give me, I'm going to go over 6 and up 17, my calculator is going to give me a positive number, which when I go this way, it is positive, so that's grand. But what happens if I had wanted this angle all the way over here? Well, if I, if I plug tangent of negative 6 over negative 17 in my calculator, my calculator goes and says, oh, that's a positive 6 over 17. Why do you want me to, why, why should I do that? Your calculator is still going to give you this first angle. It's going to be an acute angle, and you have to know to add um, 180 degrees. Okay? Um, and then if you had, say you had had, um, negative seven, hang on, let's say it had 17 negative 6. Okay, with something like that, it's going to give you the negative angle and you're, and you're great. But what happens if you'd wanted um, positive, or I lied, negative 17 positive 6? Well, it's still going to give you, uh, I can't draw. It's still going to, it's now going to give you this angle, but you're going to have to then figure out, well, what would this angle be? So you have to add 180. So be aware, or um, or let's say let's say this had given you, say your calculator gave you something easy to work with, and said it told you it was negative thirty. That's a negative thirty. Well, what if I want a positive value? Then I have to add three sixty. So this negative thirty could also be three hundred and thirty in the with the positive angle. Um, we've definitely seen this before. I'm sorry if that was a repeat of what we've done in the past. Let's keep going. Um, or come back to this page right here. So we also want to talk about how to go, there's another box on your, on your paper that says from polar to rectangular. Well, looking over here, we know that um, to find x, we're gonna have to use cosine. So we know that cosine of theta is equal to x over r. Think unit circle, x is just equal to cosine of theta. Well, now this is allowing us to change our r value. Oops, sorry, you couldn't see all that. Okay, You're, we're now allowing it to have a different r value than one, which is great. Okay, so x would equal to r cosine of theta. Likewise, when I wanna find y, um, it's sine of theta is equal to y over r. So sine of theta is equal to y over r, which tells me, multiply both sides by r, it tells me that my y value is equal to r sine theta. And this right here was one box, and this right here was the other box. Okay, the rest of it, that other part, I had a video from before, and I, um, and I like that video, so go watch the video that says four ways to name one point or something like that. Um, that will be helpful. Good luck. Practice, practice, practice. I miss you.